Good evening, everybody. Seeing at 7 o'clock, we'll call this meeting to order. Our purpose of this meeting today is to discuss the um, functions, probably, of uh, the town hall and Russell School is according to the historic buildings preservation plan. And this plan we have here from uh, Drummy, Roseanne, and Anderson. I'll start with, uh, you just give me a second here, with uh, Old Mohawk. And I'll start off here with what the uh, comment they have here about Russell School. Russell School is in good dis condition despite decades of neglect. Because of this overall lack of maintenance, serious exterior issues that would have been prevented with routine maintenance have evolved into costly work. Fortunately, the building was constructed with materials that are still regarded today as the best design choices where sustainability is concerned, slate roofing and masonry. While the roof and flashing assemblies generally top such lists, there were no active leaks de detected in the attic of Russell School. Further, it was indicated that slate repairs were performed late in 2012. The greatest concerns are centered on the potential of movement at the corners of the foundation and fire reaching effects of poor roof and site drainage. New gutters will mitigate the presently occurring erosion of mortar joints affecting the brick walls and the stone foundation. All right. Uh, and their breakdown of cost for the exterior work, again, if you remember from the last meeting, Old Mohawk gave us um, prices on how to fix the exterior and keep the place historical. It did not address electrical, plumbing, or any of the real infrastructure of the buildings. In Russell School, the foundation work would cost $94,150. Walls, $47,520. Roofing, $81,601. Carpentry, $77,200. Windows, $57,348. Trim, $51,850. Chimney, $14,640. Stairways and porches, $120,350. And contingency, uh, $54,465 for a total of 599,124. Let me see if I can find here uh, Town Hall. That's the school. Um, here's the, their executive summary for uh, Town Hall. The exterior building, the, the building exterior of Town Hall is in very good condition. Aside from some minor exterior repairs, routine maintenance like painting and railings and pointing the capstones is all that is required to remain the integrity and prolong the service life of the building's exterior, exterior materials and components. Considering the continuous use of the building interior as town offices, the interior finish systems are generally in good to excellent condition. The resilient flooring is worn, discolored, mismatched, chipped, and cracked in isolated locations, but remains well adhered to the subfloor and is non friable. It is performing well and is in very serviceable condition. Wall paneling is generally in very good condition except for a few isolated locations where work has been performed on the underlying walls. Ceiling and floor trim is, trim is missing or has been replaced in a few isolated locations. Wholesale replacement of the wall paneling is not recommended because it is performing well and is in a good serviceable condition. Hardware only needs routine maintenance and the doors are in excellent condition. Um, I'm going to read the, the repairs here, but I think we've done this already with a grant from the CPA. Uh, Repoint the foundation, 1,100. Charge count the foundation is 6,175. Weather strip doors and windows, 5260. Replace cellar windows, 2640. Miscellaneous welding, concrete, motor repairs, windows contingency I, uh, is 2,325 and contingency is 1,750. And I think the total we took out of this book was about 22,000. Uh, 22, I think we already took care of that with the CPA grant. Thank you. Let me keep going. Now we get here into this thing here. Join me, Roseanne, and Anderson. Oh, I'm sorry, but what's it done? I can't, some of that work can't be done in the winter time. Okay. Um, descriptions of the options explored. Now we're dealing with just the town hall and Russell School. And uh, it says here, town hall functions, uh, suggestions are relocate to Russell School, new building on new site, 
alterations to town hall, no change, repair existing town hall. And for Russell School, it says uh, no change, repair existing school, the town hall. It says see town hall above, and I just said that, and now we'll get into a little bit of what it costs. All right, this is going to be, please bear with me. Okay, relocate to Russell School, $4,490,168. This is the most expensive of the options explored due to extensive work required in the school. All town functions can reside within the building, but parking is extremely limited, and their suggestion is the current town hall would need to be sold. Uh, their second suggestion, new building on a new site, $4,973,185 plus site purchase. As a new building, the facility could meet the town's needs in an attractive, energy efficient, and handicapped accessible single story building. Parking can be designed to meet the building's needs. Program changes can be easily accommodated prior to time of the construction. Then another one here is underlined, which is the one they, they uh, think it would be a good idea, is alterations to town hall, $1,443,571. Although some spaces would, will need to be relocated to the senior center, cost not included, this is a, a cost-effective solution to meet the town's functions. It also includes all the repairs listed below, plus the reworking of spaces to better meet the program needs. And the last one here for Town Hall is no change. Repair existing Town Hall, $1,219,806. Although the building generally appears to be in good condition, there are many items that are necessary to bring it to an acceptable standard for long-term continued use as the Town Hall. This approach does not address and program changes. Now, I'm gonna to go to Russell School here, and it's uh, pretty short. No change, repair existing Russell School, $5,908,166. Then it says here, Town Hall, the last option is to sell the building. Now I went through and I just got a few things that I got out of this one here for Russell School. Uh, three things. One is the electrical, and I took this verbatim out of the report. This building is in the worst condition electric electrically of the building surveyed. The recommendation is to demolish all of the electrical systems. Heating. He, uh, consists of two oil-fired steam boilers that appear to be in poor to fair condition. The recommendation is to demolish the entire heating system. Plumbing, that's the restrooms with the exception of the water closet and lavatory in the restroom adjacent to the main entrance. Replace all water closets, urinals, and lavatories in the facility. It's also been my experience that in Town Hall, it's handicapped accessible, air conditioned, and has an elevator already on the installed. So this is what I got out of the reports. And I think we'd open up the comments. Anybody out here? Any questions? Anything to say? Kind of like we did the last meeting. I thought went very well. Yes. Hi, Susan Norris from 18 Rocky Hill Road. I'd just like to know in town hall if we could hear from some of the people that have offices in there. Is the space right now what people want, or do they need? Is it is it too crowded in there? Do we need more? Space for town hall, um, that's that's a big issue with it to me. Um, it sounds as though it's possible to keep it, but it's, it's a, this is okay, but is there enough space? There was a reconfiguration in the book um, that the this company did for us, and it moved a lot of the offices downstairs, upstairs, and reconfigured things, and it seemed to have a better workflow. I don't know if, Joni, did you see that? Uh, no, I didn't. No. Can you, can you put that up, Peg? Yeah. She can show you what it is now, and then she can show you what the configuration would be. Um, but I will say this, from all the times I sit there and I'm at a meeting, when a trailer truck goes by, that whole building shakes. <laughs> And it's shaking more each day. Sorry, <laughs> 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 Town Hall is now 
floor. That's the first floor of Town Hall. Second floor. And then this is the proposal coming up. That's a basement, I think. So this would make them move downstairs. The treasure, uh, conservation, conservation, and then the, there's men's rooms, restrooms. Those are reconfigured. Conservation Commission, Town Clerk, Board of Assessors, and Town Collector. So Town Clerk State Board is, is it a slightly larger space? Because currently the Town Register registers have no place to work in the... It is a bigger space, right, Peg? The Town Clerk's yeah. office. You'd have to look at the square footage. That's 310 sure. square feet. That's the collector. That's the collector. Can, you, can you move down to the um, town clerk's office? Over there. That was enlarged. It was? What was it before? I don't think so. You have it in here. Can you move it here? Town hall. It is just free. Town clerk and the new one here is uh, 241 square feet. How, is, how big was it in the old one? Huh? 217 square feet. A little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. So, you know, for that space in the registrar's card, we have to schedule our work around when there's nobody else at that spare desk. It's, kind of, it's always kind of a jungle there. It would be really helpful to have some of the space. I can't really get out here again at this point how much more space that is that we're adding. How many? 30 yeah. square feet. 30. More. Like one desk or what? And, and when you have to get out from around the counter, if somebody's in the file cabinet, you're trapped in there. It's just kind of really bizarre it's tight. configuration. And it can't be any wider than this. Well, these were only just some of the ideas, that one that they did. And then how did they reconfigure the top floor pit? This is the second floor now. The town administrator in my office has moved upstairs and there's a meeting room for confidential meetings. The floor meeting room looks like it's space about the same. Mostly what happens is they took the hallway and they made the hallway narrower and gave that extra space over to the offices. So that's what they did in the recommendations for town hall in this one. It is a fairly wide hallway. Okay, and the town clerk, if they move the whole thing over to Russell School, it would be 314 square feet. It's got my vote, even though it's five million dollars. Six million. Six million. Oh. Six million. But there you go. You asked the question. Okay. I'm trying to give you some answers. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any comment, Joan? A lot of them. <laughs> Good. Let's hear it. I'm looking at this, and I love you, Peg. You know that, don't you? Um, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. People come into the building. Right now, Board Love Peg, she directs them all, <laughs> I think. And the way that set up is, I, the way I see that first floor set up is, is who are they going to? They're walking in. As it is, they're lost. But they see the selectman's office. Peg is administrative assistant probably more than anybody, but to find out where to go. And I don't know, do you have the offices on the first floor in this reconfiguration that are people go to the most? Do you feel? You don't feel they go to the administrator's office? To the you got selector's the clerk and the office? Collector. I think they go to the collector and the treasurer. Collector? Treasurer. Treasurer, yeah, that's more payroll and, and other departments right. than not the public so much. Mm. Goes to town clerk. Office. Town clerk. Collector. It's an interesting point. I'm looking at one for Russell School, and you would walk in the, in the yeah. and you're into vestibules and veterans office, and an interesting point. It would, it would be nice if not for Peg to be that person. 
you're going to do all this budgeting too, to have a central location. I think the new one in Russell School has that, doesn't it? It has, I'm looking at the first floor right here. Go to the second floor. The Conservation Commission, that certainly doesn't have the traffic out of the first floor. There's, you know, there's a lobby in the second floor. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's well, you know, a that was taken office. care of there. But not on the first. <clears throat> I think it's split. Yeah. I think, I, think it, I would say it's about you and yeah. yeah. It all depends on where they get to park. <coughs> I think one reason they moved the treasurer downstairs is because of files. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, all the personnel files and all the treasurer's files are all on the second floor. Well, that's a lot of weight of it. Yeah. And that was another reason. Yeah, and we're just, it's always more and more. You have to, you have to Didn't say we have thing. to prop the floor up there for that? Yeah, I believe that, that initiated a little bit of repair to the town hall at one point. So a few beams in the basement and a few beams down in David's office had to be installed to support that. So yeah, I can see moving the treasurer's office down. I mean, no. No. And a question, a question I have with Russell School, all these, re, you know, there's talk of repair. Is there talk of use? And one thing I'm thinking, is there any consideration of, has that been looked at for park and rec? At Russell School, I'm going to bring them up again only because it's got a field adjacent to the schools which have the other fields they may use or don't use. Has that been considered? I see a smile, Dan. <laughs> Well, no. Dan, does anybody know if the hallway walls are load bearing walls? Tim, do you know? They seem to want to close the hallway in. Tim was here. They've got piers. They've got piers in the place, so, and the piers take the uh, trusses. Uh, the piers go uh, horizontal, like, and then they run the two plates that way on top of the piers. So there's the load-bearing walls are sitting on piers going this way, but not that way. We're looking at the second floor. Excuse me, gentlemen, I'm trying to answer your lady's question. Um, the question was if park and rec was considered for Russell School. I suppose that could be an option. Um, so uh, it's, uh, they said it, that according to this report, putting, Russell, putting Park and Rec in Russell School was not a cost prohibitive um, for the building. It would cost more to move them over there and renovate this building from Park and Rec okay. than it would have been to put either here. Yeah. put them in here or keep them at North Hadley Hall. Okay. So that's basically where they left that when that option was discussed as far as Russell School was concerned. So the, the renovations that they've given estimates on for the Russell School, that is with other town offices in mind? That's all town offices. That's all, all town, town offices. offices. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the caveat to the renovations over there would be to move all of the town offices to the new building over there. So basically, that would be your new town hall. Every office would be over there. Um, and that's, you know, because that building is so large, it could handle that. And of course, you would have bigger offices, more space. I mean, Joni, even even your and Connie area is pretty tight. And we came, we took over planning board's office. I know. And we and came it, over here. You know what? Well, yeah, it is tight again. And I mean, where are we going to be? Where are we going to be 15 years from now? Probably not going to be smaller. So, I mean, that's that's a lot of things to think about. I, I think some of the board mentioned to this company here about the renovations in Russell School that perhaps Park and Rec could go to Town Hall. Because at one time, Town Hall, I'm, not, I'm an old man, I remember just barely when the uh, second floor was an auditorium in Town Hall with a stage and all that. Yeah. And that's, that's where it used to be. And I don't know, if they, they were talking about having a, uh, auditorium for their programs and all that kind of thing but uh, that wasn't mentioned in here and we would have to get figures for that kind of thing but um, it's an option it's an option that, well, whether it's a good one or not I don't know um, 
I don't see part of that. For those of us that were here last week for the meeting, we talked about parks and recreation and the senior center being in the new building. It's part of the office. <laughs> Everything's open for discussion. <clears throat> Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how many, how much people have seen, as far as Russell School, the new plans or or potential of what that building would look like. And I don't know. Hey, do you have those on there? Basically, the, the elevator would be off of the side where the fire escape is, and that would be a full elevator. And then on the second floor, you would walk out of that elevator and there'd be a long corridor into the middle of the building where there'd be a lobby area. And then, of course, off of that, you would have different offices. And then on the first floor, there would be offices. And our, our, the selectmen's meeting room would be on the second floor next to that long corridor. The, the lobby would lead you into that meeting room. So that's what's that? I didn't see an elevator in the total price tag of this. Um, well, it's got to be in there. It's in the plans. Yeah, there it is. Can you see it? This is the plan. Yes. So there's the elevator. Um, that's the first floor. The elevator, it's on the back side of the building, so there that'd be your first floor. So what do you have there? You have board of assessors, treasurer, collector, um, clerk. Print and copy room, vestibule. So there's a lot more space in that building. Yeah, they're using they're utilizing the whole basement there too if we were to renovate that whole building. What do you have in the basement stuff? Uh, I think it's page before. So that base, the basement there doesn't have the um, dampness issues that we have at Town Hall then? Not after it's Well, it won't be after it's running. <laughs> well, because that's why we have so many files right now in the yeah. treasurer's office. Right. Because I had to pull them out of the basement. Under 88. Horrendous. Here's the basement. That's up now. Yeah, so in the basement you would have the planning board would have their own room. They'd have their, they'd have two file rooms. You'd have a staff room, a mechanical room, corridor, custodial. You have a full electrical room. You'd have a boiler room, a mechanical room, and a vault. That would all be downstairs in the basement. In the staff room. In the staff room. Yeah. And there's even a room for coats and lockers. That would all be downstairs in the basement, according to these renovation plans. And of course, you know you have a you have an elevator that's going to service all three of these floors, plus stairs. Joan, did you have a chance to look at this URA? No, I haven't. And is that a full elevator or is that a lift? That's well, a full full elevator. Full elevator. Well, that would be nice. I know people don't like that lift. There's actually a, a 60 foot, 60 square foot lobby next to the elevator <laughs> on the on the basement floor. And so you'd have the elevator and the stairs would come off the back of the building. But you know, when you start looking at like Joan, the treasurer's room in the new plan, you guys would be on the first floor and you'd have 441 square feet. I'm not sure what you have now, but I guarantee it. Since it's not 441, I can look. So the offices would be a lot larger. We have 393 now. We have 393 now. Yeah, so you have 393 now and you have 441. So the rooms would be bigger. One of the options, of course, that wasn't discussed which is unpopular, but uh, I feel I have to bring it up anyway. 
is to demolish Russell School. It's, it's an option that has them bring it up only because uh, some people feel that the land is very important, that corner building, that corner lot, and that the town should not lose control of that lot because it, it abuts all the school and it gives you a lot of frontage on Route 9. That's not something I'm in favor of, but I think it's my responsibility to tell you that that, of course, could be an option. And also another option is to sell the building. And if we were to sell the building, I would hope that we would try to put a right on it to keep it in housing and not into any particular kind of business. I would much rather, I, I'm just speaking for myself, I think it'd be a better idea if we were to sell it, to sell it for housing. So uh, we would have a business in there and try to take up our parking here in Town Hall. But these are options I'm just putting out for discussion. Speaking of parking, Danny, over at, uh, at uh, Russell, what is there for spaces available over there versus in the Town Hall now? Good question. Total. I don't know if we got that. In this plans, um, for the, I don't think it addresses that, Jerry. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, yeah, it's a total square foot someplace. There's 14 spaces now, and then they reconfigured the lot. Probably 20 existing. That's what's going on. So tell what square foot area, 10,530 square feet total. No, he's talking about parking. Joe. Parking. Oh. Okay, where was that? There it is, okay. Uh, Twenty one last page. Twenty one of forty six. Now it's almost like they uh, don't have parking on the street, Jerry. All the way to the end of those plans. It's on the lawn. Be right there. On the other side of the lawn, that's where they started. And then they have, have it up close to the building. They have them on both sides. They have them. Yes. They have, there it is right there. They have parking spaces <clears throat> up near the building. And then they have another set of parking spaces that encompass a lot of the existing parking that's right along the street. But they also have another row um, on the inside of that. So you would have two rows of cars there. No, one. They basically brought all the parking in off the road. I'm assuming that yeah. this is, this is, this is, this is not there. parking. So there's about 19 existing spaces on the road where you yeah. pull in from the road. And then they reconfigure the parking lot on the grass space. And they come up with about 18 spaces when they reconfigure in the grass. So you lose about one space, but you get the parking off the road is what they did in this study. But there's 19 spaces now, and they're saying you're going to keep roughly the same amount. And how many are there at Town Hall currently? It's never one when I get there. <laughs> Spaces in the Russell School are, is, are currently being used by Town Hall because it seems to me that I've seen people go over their park and come over to Town Hall because they couldn't find a space in Town Hall. Oh, I, I do that all the time. I think it's a, it's a free for all. When I know, like on Wednesday nights, when we have a meeting and the church has a function going on, you can drive around for 10 minutes looking for a spot. Um, That's not no matter where you have it. Right. Either way, you're going to have, I think you're going to, either way in the future, parking potentially is going to be the largest obstacle we have in all of these buildings. Um, yep. I think we're going to have to get a little creative moving forward on how I, we park. I think if, yeah, I think if you move the town hall over to Russell School, you've got that, the adjacent lots now that the old gym's down, that they probably could make some more parking places down in that yeah, particular know. area where the corner is. You know, it's a little bit of a walk, but at least it's all off the road and safe in the parking lot. You know? so you put, make them in the grass there, and you're adding, yeah. that, you're adding the... Uh, Elevator and the stairs to the back of the building. Anyway, that's so going to come that's down bring it closer to the grass and the baseball field. Put a, so a put a sidewalk in down along that curve right, going right. into Hopkins that's parking right. lot and make, make it all accessible. Few, few, make more handicapped accessible parking yes. spaces. That's mm -hmm. right. So no people that can make it up there go down below, but get a park. Yeah, because if they park up top, then they're going to wheelchair all the way around to the back for the handicapped elevator. Yeah. 
I mean, you could utilize that space the way they've got it drawn out, Willie, to, to make all those spaces really along the building handicap accessible. I mean, you'd have... Yep, yeah, but you're you'd have eight you're or back you're still apart from the elevator. Oh, well, yeah, you'd have to go around the corner to it. The elevator's going to be here. The bottom, that's correct. The elevator's yeah. going to be here. So all the cars would be parked right there. So if you had, right like, there. handicap yeah. parking up front here, that's not... And I, you know, this is what these sidewalks are for. They're leading you, this sidewalk's leading you to the elevator that would be in this portion of the building. So obviously, if you had additional parking down there towards the Hopkins parking lot or the old gym, you would want to put the handicap up here next to the building. It's a lot less. What about extending some parking? It's up there to the north. Just extend that a little bit, maybe another 15 or. Just you, mean just, you mean here? Yeah. <laughs> That's an option that we we'll discussed at a later. The only thing about the only thing is, oh, yeah. if you start approaching Route Nine, then you start getting into visibility issues. Okay. And good point. If you're better off putting having some spaces here and putting overflow parking lot down in a regular parking lot right. rather than yeah. going towards Route Nine. You're right. Does anybody have any other comments? Andy? Before you came in, people um, made a comment about what about, again, I think we talked about it last week. Someone had mentioned uh, Town Hall Park and Rec, but I personally don't see it. And I don't know, I don't think you guys did either with your presentation um, on what you did for us. Right, based on the needs that the department's already submitted, I don't I don't see it without extensive renovations and, and, and how it would fit the joint plan that you were discussing at HOC the other night. Yeah, I don't, I, think I, so. I don't see the feasibility there. And, you know, we run into a lot of the issues that you're talking about here. Mm -hmm. that we've talked about even relocating here. Mm -hmm. So then what would happen to town hall? Historical. Maybe historical. Storage. Files. Yeah, or you're going to renovate town hall and make it work like um, they did over in Hatfield and they just did a complete renovation of their town hall over there. Took away the gym that was inside where you played basketball many moons ago. Not me. That was before my day. Thank you. <laughs> to say it, but I did. But anyway, <laughs> that's how old I am. Um, so they they were able to do something with their town hall and make it more accessible. So um, I personally would like to take a trip over and see what they did do to their town hall. I want to I want to do that. It's on my agenda to do. Well, I think. Um, to touch on Andy's point is what would happen to Town Hall. I think if we were to renovate Russell School and move all the town offices over there, yeah. we would still have a use for that building. Um, think about the amount of storage that you need. Um, I mean, the library's got things stored in North Hadley Hall. I mean, the beauty of having all your excess storage in Town Hall is it's in a central location. It's not five five miles down the road. It's right across the street. So, you know, there's a potential use for that building if we were to move out of it. Right. Yes. I think when we discuss going on DPW. Wasn't it part of this that says you can't renovate something unless you have a place for these people to go? Swing space. Swing space. Well, yeah, yeah. Obviously, that's that's a, a large part of it because any of these buildings that you start to renovate, it's not going to be a short-term process. It's going to take time, a lot of time. So, you know, if you're renovating a building, obviously you can't be occupying it at the same time. So you're going to have to move people temporarily until the renovation is completed. And we're not talking about, you know, two weeks worth of renovation. We're talking about a significant amount of work that has to be done. So there is part of that in planning um, 
the strategy on how you go about it, what you do first, what you do second, and, and things like that. So, yes, Mr. Design. What are current terms of uh, North Star's contract with the town? What is our commitment to them, and, and when is it through? We have another 18 months. Another 18 months, Gary. Okay, so if you were to start renovating that building, you could start for 18 months anyway. That's correct. Okay, and if they, that building was empty, this would be a moot issue because if you were going to move the people from Town Hall over to there, that building would be empty to begin with. Correct. Okay, and yeah. isn't one of the things we're trying to get away from having too many buildings on the uh, on the towns? Uh, I mean, we currently heat. If, if Town Hall was moved over to there, wouldn't it behoove the town not to maintain the old Town Hall for heating purposes and insurance purposes and that type of thing? Wouldn't it behoove us? to see whether or not the church or the uh, farm museum had a use for the building. Well, there's another use for uh, it, too. Because I know the farm museum is busting at the seams at this point in time now. Right. And if it was something that could come off of the uh, the expenses of, of the community, wouldn't that kind of be an asset to us moving over there? You have far more space over in this building there. So I think that if you were able to utilize Joni storage space over there, maintain the people that are in this building now, wouldn't we be able to actually live within our means over at that building because the square footage is so much larger than our current town hall? Right. Correct. I had another idea this morning when I woke up, actually. We got the American Legion right next door that they're doing all kinds of fundraisers and looking for things. And if we're going to be out of a building, particularly whichever one it is, if it's this one or the town hall or... Or North Hadley Hall, we right. could uh, maybe think about renting uh, the upstairs of the American Legion and temporarily using that for housing for us throughout these renovations. You know, everybody is looking at what we're going to do with these buildings, but we have we're going to be displaced for a minimum of a year or more on any major renovation. Mr. Devine. Were you more or less thinking the, I don't know, I'm not going to put words in anybody's mouth, but going along on that thought that perhaps uh, cutting Russell School out of it too in North Hadley Hall and renovating Town Hall to uh, perhaps make the offices a little bigger and build new for a park and rec? No, what, he's, what, no. He, what he just mentioned was renovate Russell School and yeah. then take Town Hall off the off the off may, you know give it to the farm museum or maybe even the church if they have a need for it would yeah. historical like to get back into there maybe i don't know society yeah. well, to, to add to mr divine's point that if uh, you know you are going to the only way to really divest yourself from the maintenance and expenses of the building is to divide, divest yourself of property at all i mean in the sewer too Get a, even if you've got a tenant, you're still going to have to maintain it. Right. And, and you can't let it go idle because, well, we know what happens when we let it go idle. This man had, had uh, slightly uh, thought about getting a piece of property that's big enough to build a brand new town hall and maybe take care of all the offices. That way you can have, uh, say, on just, just for Haha, uh, the East Street, the Bala property over there, or Benbin's property over on East Street, and you get a number of, you could put a good size, brand new building in there, energy efficient, move the town hall over there, move the park and rec over there, and get rid of a couple of buildings. I mean, it's obviously an option, but if you build a brand new building, then you have a bunch of old buildings, what are you going to do with them? Well, you're going to sell them. You sell the building, you get the money for the building, then you get the tax money every single year. Right. So now you've got money that you've sold that for selling it, you get tax money every year. For that one, you do the same thing in the North Hadley Hall. Now you've got taxes coming up in two places, and then you can make a decision as to what you're going to do with the town hall. And you've got everybody out of there, so you can decide whether you want to to somebody else or whatever and move the seniors into there until you remodel this. If, in fact, you can do it. But you to add to that point, isn't the state government uh, contributing 62% over the last three years as an average to new buildings that are being built? 
they are giving money, yes. And they will donate to uh, money, monies if we're not in the floodplain like the Hopkins. So we could get money from the state, federal, and I would imagine that money to build a new building. Well, the Russell School is on the floodplain, correct? It's in. Yes. No. 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 I don't think so. I think it's in. According to Tim. Yes, it is. It is. Hopkins is. Hopkins is not in the floodplain. Russell School is not in the floodplain. Hopkins parking lot is not in the floodplain. And the old gym where it was was not in the floodplain. But the parking lot next to Russell School is the floodplain. And the parking lot south of Hopkins is floodplain. Because when you're looking at the elementary school, um, a surveyor took elevations out there. And we thought that the parking lot were Going back, if we had to expand Hopkins, we found out that the Hopkins ex expansion, so-called completion of the H, would not be in the floodplain. It would miss it by inches, but it was out of the floodplain. I know there's all those old pictures of Russell School when they had the floods in the 30s, and it was high and dry, just like Town Hall. It was right up to the back door almost, but there it was. <laughs> and you're saying, uh, Mr. Nixon, you know of any kind of monies that are out there for? Uh, Building, building new for uh, for for Don's school? Yeah. No. Municipal. Yeah. I think it was. Okay. And who's next? The, uh, today, the grant money that I was just watching on the news that had come out uh, for emergency preparedness, our police and fire station, roughly, or any evacuation area, which depending on how you name this new building, if you were to put it up. You know, it could be a, a evacuation building also. If you, got, if you got a big auditorium there, you put a generator yep. in there to take care of it. Now, we can house, be, house the people in a hurricane or a tornado. And we don't have one in that. Yes, you do. Elementary school got an emergency generator. They don't. The emergency generator doesn't take care of all the, build, the whole building. It only takes care oh. of kitchen and emergency yes. lights right, right. and oil. So that's not considered <coughs> proper. We talked about Hopkins. But yeah. But that is being an emergency building. You know, and last meeting there was quite a bit of historical talk about the three corners we do have in the center of town and the historical value of the town of Hadley. And that's that's what we, we've all built on here. You know, and I, I would like to keep, you know, the buildings that are existing, no matter what we do with them, whether we keep them and renovate them or, or um, sell them off and have them renovated by private concerns, to have them stay looking the way they do. I mean, that's, that's what Hadley is here right now in the center of town, along with North Hadley Hall. Do you have a comment? Me? No, I was just saying there's a zoning meeting upstairs. Sorry, I think I went uh, I have a question about selling the buildings about what the procedure is. How long it might take, what has to happen. I can't recall selling the building. David? Um, so to sell any property, you need a town meeting vote. Then you do need to go out to bid using the assessed value as the minimum price. Is it a majority? It's a majority? Uh, it's a. What do we need to sell the land to uh, up in North Hadley that we have? You know, I, I would have to double check as to whether it be a super majority or a majority. I, my recollection is that it's a super majority town meeting vote. You can sell some land to be able to. Uh, Knock down the old gym, if I'm not mistaken. That no, correct? No. No, I thought it was he sold some land up in North Hadley. Auction tax. That went to auction. It was, it was taken by the tax of the town for bad tax, 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 taxes. Okay. And it was sold at auction. You got, you got to declare the property surplus, which is goes to the town meeting, and then you have to do the okay. proposal to sell it. We were going to do that with um, Huntington, right? We tried. <laughs> it's still there. There's still property to sell on Huntington, too. That we never really have decided that we own. 
you know, we're, we're, we're already invested. We're already invested in the land that we've got these buildings on right now, and no matter who it is, they're going to renovate them. I don't think they're just going to take them down, and they're going to be gone forever. So if somebody else can do it, I know it's going to cost the town and the taxpayers a little bit more money, but I would like to see them uh, rebuilt and, and reclassified or reused. You know, that when, when this DRA came through with that uh, plan for the town hall at Russell School, I mean, nobody even really had a thought of that until we opened it up and, and they presented it to us, you know. And whatever the town hall will, well, not quite double in size, but pretty close. If they were to move the town offices there, and then think about this place and how many offices we've got here that are still vacant upstairs, the old classrooms that could be renovated. I mean, not piecemeal, you know, you'd have to renovate the whole building from the cellar here on up and do it the right way and it's probably good for another hundred years, you know. Sense of what the um, assessed values are of the buildings that were discussed? I mean, just yeah, they're all in. I'm pretty sure they're all in. Assessed building values? No, I, I don't think all the are in there. So the, uh, the town has just historically undervalued its buildings for assessment purposes, so we're in the neighborhood of uh, two hundred to $300,000 per building. That's yeah. pretty outrageous. I mean, if, if that's to be the minimum bid, if that yeah. process were to take place, I don't think that would be a really smart thing exactly. to do. Okay, so who else is good? Okay. Ginger. Ginger. Um, I guess I would just like to say that I agree with John about the historical nature of the center of town. How sad it would be to just dismiss these buildings as not important. They're, they're, they're assets to the town, and the Russell School is... I mean, I had the opportunity to go through there with the old Mohawk folks when they did their study, and it's it's got fabulous space. If anyone has been in there, you know that. And it, it's, yes, it needs work, it all needs work, but um, it's a fabulous building. And it's important to remember that in these historic buildings, some of this work can be paid for with CPA funds, including elevators and heating and electricity. All of that is a preservation project. And we can do a, get a bond against the CPA funds, which can go on for years. It's legal and encouraged by the state. So it's just another, it wouldn't take, it wouldn't be all the money, but it would take care of several millions of dollars worth of work if we needed to do that, if we wanted to do that. So there are lots of um, uh, examples on, on the web of places, towns who have used CPA funds to um, restore their buildings. And um, I think if we want to keep these buildings, if we really want to maintain this historical nature of the center of the town, which was so important at our, at our 350th celebration a few years ago, then I think we can do it. And I think it's possible if we want to put in the work to do the research, get the money, and do it. I think. My and I feel that way about North Hadley Hall. Yes, John. Question. I know at one point um, David Michkowski, who's an architect, had gone through and he had gone into all of the offices, um, asked offices about what their space needs were, and he had done up plans for this building. Did anything ever happen with those? Were they looked at at all? You got that plan? Yeah. I, I had them last meeting. I got them here again. Now, did, were either one of DRA or Mohawk, did they look at these at all in consideration of, of what to do with these buildings? Mohawk looked yeah. at all the studies that yes. came down with the yes. What part was it concerned with the interior building? They were just concerned with the exteriors. Of course, I don't know if maybe these weren't really looked at further because of the issue Tim spoke about with the earthquake requirements yeah. of a building now. Uh, um, there's some rough plans as well as the issue on the back from the elevator and the corridor through. Did you see those? Now, did these include, these include those include all of the offices from town hall over to this building, correct? Uh, and adding on to the building? There, no, there was a meeting room, other offices, uh, 
classrooms, kitchens, and a lot of uh, this is the first floor. Planning board, water resources, nurses' office, meeting rooms again. Uh, historical council and aging. And that include the leaving some of the offices at Town Hall? There was a whole another oh. second floor. No, it's everything being moved here. Yeah. Okay, but we never got a price tag on that. So is that no. interesting? No, it hadn't had been approved by the select manager. Okay, yeah. loud. Yeah. Right. Right. So yeah. if, it, okay. if it was viable to go off the mm -hmm. floor. All right. But we have a quote here. It said the roof of the addition was not designed as a feature floor. <clears throat> Accordingly, framing and foundations do not have adequate capacity to support a second floor. That means we would probably have to redo part of this, right, John? I'm not an architect, but we'd have to redo part of it, probably exactly. shore it up. Exactly. That was the big question that we had, because they did not get into the structure of this building. And then to Joan's point, it says, in addition, the building does not meet current seismic, seismic requirements. A vertical expansion would require that the existing building be bought into full compliance, and in parentheses, it has cost prohibitive. I'm just reading what they said. But I don't think they've actually had a, a, a cost or a look for this building. Yeah. The architect yeah. that design. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. This building, I believe, was built the same time as the Hopkins, it, part of the original Hopkins. And I think, I know the second floor of Hopkins and probably the second floor is here, what they call lift slab techniques. And that's why they're saying exactly what they're saying. Um, the fellow that designed the second floor, designed this addition, he said it was built in accordance with the code and would, would take the second floor. And that was the fellow, that the architect that threw this all up. And they had it, had it built. So, uh, the seismic, of course, that never came into question uh, because back then we didn't have it. But he said this would take the second floor. And he designed it that way. So as you all can see, we have still, after two meetings, nights of meetings, we have still several questions that basically have not come to any conclusion um, or direction. I mean, it's, we can take everybody's comment into um, what people would like done, but again, it's, it's not the majority. I would still say it would be the minority. Um, because everybody has a special purpose for each place that we've talked about over the last two meetings. Um, so we're still left with which building do we start on? Which building do we get rid of? Do we get rid of any building? Um, so we still have a lot of, of things that weren't come to any conclusion. And yeah, I, I feel like we need to pick something and go with it. And um, you know what I like to see, and Joyce, you had the idea was actually a ballot question of a referendum a, vote. Yeah, uh, non-binding or whatever. Uh, and the two most important buildings to the to the taxpayers, which two buildings would you like to concentrate on? Be it. Yeah, but you got yes. out, before you do that, you got to outline an option because we've got multiple options for each building. Exactly. So if you have people just checking out Senior Center, North Hadley Hall, Russell School, yeah. you're going to get a raw count of the number, but then you're going to turn around and say, okay, now we got to make everything fit in the buildings that you want to renovate. So I think I'm not opposed to putting a ballot question out there for people to to offer us an opinion, but I think we should present them with um, a floor plan of what the buildings will look like if you renovate them. These offices would be here, you know, right where everything would be so people can understand what they're voting for or opposed to, um, rather than just, you know, putting a check mark next to a box, next to a name of a building. I think there has to be a clear plan as to what that vote represents. You have to have a clear plan. You have to have a clear amount of dollars. You have right. to have how much it's going to be on their tax dollar, how much do they want their taxes increased, or if they want their taxes increased. 
and we've only gone through four buildings. So I mean, that's all a part of this whole thing that we need to and, and do. I have to say this, that we've only gone through four buildings, and we haven't even discussed the DPW. Well, that's easy. Yeah. Demolish it and start over. But that's that's another cost to the taxpayer and everything. That hell all has to figure in. So I think we have to go and have a couple more meetings and just let everybody know the condition of all the buildings that are in this report. And Dan. Yes. Dan. Has anybody given any thought to building a new Hopkins? If you can get 62% reimbursement and utilizing the existing Hopkins Academy to house yeah, last, the town function. Last meeting, Mr. Uh, Kapaki came up with that idea of building a new school. And and yeah, there the funding is is what, how much? 62%? Somebody said 62% earlier. I know it, it's quite a chunk of money, yeah, for sure. It was 62%, but then when we went to do the addition for the seventh and eighth grade um, a few years ago, it was less than 62%, and we didn't get it. Well, he, he's tempted to just did one, so I mean, it'd be interesting to see what, what. And theirs was newer than Hopkins, yeah, but it was in such funding. disrepair. They're, they're qualified for much higher funding than Hadley does. Mm -hmm. but, but you also have to get qualified. You have to get invited to join that program. So you have to submit your request that you want to do your building. Then you get invited to submit a proposal. Then you get, if your proposal is accepted, then you do the evaluation process. It's a long, lengthy well, you process have to, you have to, to do get needs, there. You have to do a needs process. So, I mean, it's not just the money sitting there. Um, so there's a lot of hands grabbing at it, too. Yeah, there's a lot of hands. <laughs> you know, I, I look at this and I see we need to do something, but we also need swing space, and we also have time requirements. So if we can't get into Russell for 18 months, the library, to me, although we haven't talked about the library, it seems to be the farthest building along in the process of actually deciding what they need for their building. And I just still keep bringing the library and the senior center together to connect them with one elevator serving the two buildings to give you new space for the library, give you some new space for this building right upstairs. And then you have the ability to start having some swing space and move around. Um, so thinking about the time restrictions and where everybody is, you can't just move somebody out and then put them on the corner. I still think that's, the more and more I think about it, the more and more I think that's the way to go. Well, as we've been talking about it over the last two years, this building was always the top of our list, our list to be the most viable building um, out of all of the buildings that, that we are looking at. Um, it has the most potential. Yeah, and you've got the land, you've got the parking out back, you know. Uh, there is an adjacent piece of property there. I don't know if it would be available to us. But. Yeah, and uh, this building here needs it's an elevator that goes to the third floor. Why do we only have one that goes to the second? I just can't understand it. But if we do have Don't fret over it. It's no, done. No, I know. I hope to. Somehow that backs us into a corner. You know, bad decisions. No, because you've got to start from scratch anyway. You're going to have to put a new, yeah. if you renovate it, you're going to have to put a new elevator in anyway. So right. no, the catwalk over here that you were talking about, I don't know of a better way to describe it. Well, actually, I think more it should be more of a he, building he between the two. He was thinking about attaching a Buildings. I was the one. I I, I misinterpreted uh, yeah. misinterpreted what he said, and I I thought he wanted like a bridge connecting the third floor to the third floor over there. We have to do something. So you're talking about filling in this part of the, the driveway parking lot with the more building. building. He he he's talking about filling it in with a building. I'm talking about just making a flyway. handicap, yeah, flyway or walkway across with glass on both sides. Sounds you know. picturesque. Yeah. But that way the library gets their elevator to the second this floor. Building. You know, this building. You, you, this, this, because like I said before, uh, you got 24, 2,600 square feet in this building that's not used. All due respect with all the money that has been put into the library in, the, in recent years and the dysfunctional library, is that the priority of this town, to redo the library? No. Or is it no, to focus no. on some of these buildings that need to be No, done? we're not doing redoing the library, Jerry. We're just adding an elevator for both buildings' access. Instead of giving two elevators, have one. We, we are looking at the renovation of this building and, and accessing that building without an elevator, without the maintenance, without the installation of, of the second elevator. I would propose you could put an elevator in 
the library for far less than you could put the catwalk up. Far less. Yeah. But we still have got to access the third floor here. It's in there empty. And you need two elevators, one there, one here. But in any case, you need a third L4 elevator here. Correct. But to put the catwalk across, it'd probably be significantly more money than an elevator that reaches all fours over there by a long shot. So just put a building between the two buildings, is what I say. <laughs> oh, and yeah. one elevator again. One elevator. Is that cheaper than either of those options? We don't. We don't have any accurate figures. I, I mean, we've got well, two Jim's or three. an engineer, so he does have some idea. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I don't have cost, though. No, not cost. <laughs> just just, just relative, relative what would be required. Right. Harry Bird got an estimate for replacing that elevator. It was $190,000. Which one? The one in this building? The one that's in this building. And to go to the third floor. Really? Yes, Mr. Yeah, I, just a comment, uh, without getting too much into the design, but yeah, the, the elevator where it stands now is, you know, prevents e the second le level of, you know, second egress from the third floor. It doesn't, it doesn't go all the way down, so you need to put an elevator in a different spot. Than if, if you all look at the, the big plan that was coming around, they had a little addition along with the renovation of this. Yeah, the back and the elevator and the rear of it. Yeah, uh, on that yeah. big plan that's coming around. That's right, yeah, Rachel. I don't think the plans here show an elevator to the third floor. Yeah, they don't. No, no. North Hadley and uh, Russell School. Yes, Ms. Geek. Can I just ask about, think more about process then? I mean, I know it's easy to be broken down into the weeds about elevators and room design and stuff like that, but going back to the point about, you know, whether there's a referendum question on a, on a ballot or that kind of thing, it seems like there's enough information now, I mean, it, it seems so daunting, the task in front of the five of you trying to figure out where we go from here. And to your point, Joyce, everybody has their, kind of their own personal opinion or vested interest in some of these options. Is there a way to kind of rank um, everything that DRA has come up with? It seems like some of the issues with, some, with certain buildings may be showstoppers, like things that are either just so ridiculously expensive or unwieldy that there's really not much chance that we're going to do that and start kind of knocking some of those out to see if you can get it down to a more reasonable number of options. Um, and so I'm just wondering kind of where you're going with that. I mean, even hearing like there's an 18 month um, agreement with the tenant, well, that happens all the time, and you know, honestly, I would think that if that was the, the main item about that corner, and I know it's not, they're saying if that's one of the significant items, why couldn't we approach the tenant and talk about potentially buying them out a little bit earlier, if in fact it was gonna allow us to move forward with that faster? So, I mean, just trying to wrestle some of those obstacles. I, I, think, I think, though, that I take your point, I take it completely, but I think we still have to go and for everybody's benefit, still talk about the DPW, still talk about the safety complex and the library, get it all out there, and then absolutely prioritize. I have it in my head what I'd like to prioritize, but I don't think it's fair to anybody, to the other departments we're discussing until we discuss everything that's out there. I just, I'm not, I'd like to ask the same question I asked last meeting, and uh, some of the same faces are here, but who, who thinks we really should have a building committee? Just a show of hands question. All right, who does not? I'm torn. I'll quantify that. We can have a building committee as long as we pick it. Yeah. How's that sound? It's going to be pretty strict. I you know the requirements to be on this committee. I've been sitting. I've been sitting with these buildings. Uh, I sit on the capital committee, so we've we were actually the one that recommended that this study be done, this feasibility study yeah. be done, um, to tie in a lot of information. Um, I mean, I, I have an idea of where we should start and how we should proceed, but I understand that that's you know my information and my thoughts. Um, the only thing about it is if you have a building committee, 
you really have to pick the right people. Because everybody has emotional attachments to different things. And if it gets in there and it clouds, if it clouds the committee and it bogs the committee down, then we're just turning the pages on the calendar. We're not getting anything done. I agree. However, however, that's a significant component of Hadley history, and you can't ignore that. You can't. No, I, I just don't think every. Perfect. I don't think anybody's ignoring it. Exactly. You know, we went yeah. through it with the school. We went through it with the police and fire, and, and we had committees that that really looked at every single viable option. You so know, you when we put those things. Both. Yeah. Dan, you said um, the the requirements would be very strict. Can you elaborate a little bit more about that? It'd be. In my view, and I'm only one vote on this board, uh, someone that would have a fresh look at everything, probably a different viewpoint that we probably never thought of, but somebody that doesn't have you know, an iron in the fire. For uh, you know, you would I would want to see somebody some, from say the fire department because we want to do another fire bill. Uh, so I know that um, although you're going to need the input of course, all those people, of course, of course, absolutely, of course, you need to do. When that committee would have to meet with these different departments, but it would have to be just different. It would have to be uh, some new faces, I think, and very well qualified, very well qualified. When, wouldn't the selectmen have the last option on pick, picking that committee and let anybody apply for it? Instead yeah. of, it sounds to me like there's some people you don't want to have on that committee. <laughs> 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 you see everybody, nobody was a vested interest. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Maximoski, you you know, you know, you you know, you you have to vote for you. To be honest, to me, I'm not trying to going to be a wise guy here, but the selectmen would be the only ones that could pick that building committee. Thank you. Of course you're going to pick them. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Let anybody it's apply and you guys have the final yeah. decision. Like any building yeah. committee. Yeah. I mean, by their quality. Uh, the, the other comment is like 18 months left on the uh, school over there. Yeah. I propose to you that you won't be ready to do much of any building no, before right. 18 months. Yeah. So the 18 months yeah. exactly. that they have left on their contract is nothing. Yeah. That's not a hindrance at all. But you know, there's other things to consider, like the substation mm -hmm. in North Hadley for the fire department. That's something you could get going on right now but I would like to hold meetings for all of the buildings that we have and then after that have a discussion on a committee or whatever but I'd like to get one thing done you know and then proceed from there if that's possible. You know if, if, you, if we're worried about fast tracking it which you might as well say we're going to fast track it 18 months is not that far down the road <laughs> Now get a committee together in the next couple of weeks, anybody that's really interested, you know, and, and get all their letters of intent in here to us. And I don't see why we can't discuss put a committee together. I'm sorry, was that a motion? No, we're going to have a discussion. No, we're going to have a discussion. We're going to have a discussion. We're going to have a as far as the committee will discuss it. Yes, Mr. Wiskevitz. Yeah, I mean, one of the first tasks of the uh, building committee should be to probably put together information for the referendum, if that's what you want to do. Exactly. If you guys don't want to do that, and there's, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of information out there. Yeah. There's, like, so many different plans out there, and, um, you know, just get it consolidated, put it in a format that everybody can understand. Maybe there's three choices for each building. Just kind of explain it and have a night that you explain it or whatever, and then have people go out and vote. At least it's, it's not Binding is just to get an idea what people are feeling. Just, that just that that's what we're trying to do with these meetings. This is what we're trying to do here. Uh, but let the committee do the, the yeah. work for you. Get it together. So you don't have to do it. You can concentrate on yeah. business. Yeah, I don't want everybody blaming me, but I'd like to be part of them going, good job, guys. <laughs> so, so we're really slowing down. We're really saying now. Everyone was saying earlier, we got to do something to this building, got to do something to the building. Now what I'm hearing from everyone here is we need a committee and we need to take a big, bigger approach to this. So now you're saying slow down. I'm completely okay with that step, but I want everybody to understand that's really what you're saying, and it will slow the process down, and I'm completely okay with it. It is better than making a wrong decision. But I've been listening to people tell me, speed up, you got to some of these buildings. Speed up, you got to some of these buildings. Now you truly are saying, slow down, take a breath, start where you should have started before with a committee, and let the committee do what they build it up. And that's fine with me, but I'm just Where did you hear that? I've heard that from several people. 
I'm actually just hearing a really strong request for leadership is really what I'm hearing. And it seems like people just want to see action be taken. If that action is to say, we've appointed a committee of non-vested interests who are going to tell us what to do so that we can vote on it, that doesn't seem like slowing down. And I would argue also that you mentioned before about this referendum of getting an idea of what the town wants. And it seemed overwhelming. And there are so many choices of how people vote on it. But if you put out a very simple referendum of, do you prioritize historical preservation over cost? And everyone says, or the majority or the supermajority says yes, then you've eliminated several options because then you have to look at what preserves historical interest. So I just think that no one's saying slow down. I think they're in fact saying please speed up, but speed up thoughtfully with a long-term plan. And I think that the idea of having a committee so that you guys can focus on town business and you actually have somebody whose whole attention is on getting the ball rolling will help you. Well, I mean, to touch on, to touch base with that, I'll, I'll take a poll of my fellow board members here, because um, Guilford and John are fairly new to the game. Joyce, Dan, and I. It, how many of you? I, I have a, I have a clear-cut vision, in my opinion, on what we should do. Um, I was going to make a motion. I don't know, ten months ago. <laughs> um, does, does everybody have a clear vision of? how to proceed. I mean, we're holding these public hearings um, to get the public involved and right. try and educate people. Right. Um, if, if people are thinking that we haven't, I know individually I have, I have a, a plan to proceed with these buildings in my head. I haven't made a motion, I haven't made a public because I knew we were having these public hearings. Does everybody else have an idea of how to proceed with these buildings? I more or less do. I, I, yes. Yeah. John? Yeah. So you have five, you know, I, I five have, elected members. I have have buildings. My main concerns was we're looking at 25 million, 30 million, let's say, for everything. If we were to renovate them all. No, it's less than that. Well, I'm just 19. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm and just, it's actually less than 19. No. And, and we don't know because there's there's too many variables in, in both of these reports still yet right now. Let's let's throw some stuff out here. Right but, back. Well, we're not doing another I, study. What I'm saying? No, no, I'm, no, absolutely. We've got plenty of information here, like, like yeah. someone just said. But the most useful two buildings after the uh, DRA report came out is is Russell School turning that into the, the municipal offices, and this building here for future well, use. For, I'm, I'm get, uh, can you back I'm, up a second? Uh, what I'm talking about is, is you've asked the question two meetings in a row yeah. about a building committee. Yeah. Okay. Now, I voted against it because, you know, I've been thinking about this for a year and a half. I have a clear-cut vision on how we should proceed. I don't think we need to get five or six new people in the room, give them all this information and say, you know, have at it, ladies and gentlemen. I just asked if each one of us has a plan to proceed with these buildings. Um, I know I made a declaration to Joyce and Dan over a year ago. You guys weren't on the board. If, if we want to go back and have a building committee go through this information, come back to us and present ideas, that's one thing. And I would, I would be all in favor for that if each one of us does not have a clear vision on how to proceed with these buildings in question. But if we do, we should, we should sit down and discuss them in open forum so people can hear them. That's different than these public hearings. These public hearings are for the people in town to understand the information that we have that they might not have. And we've, we've held off having specific discussions on how we wanted to proceed with these buildings because we hadn't had these public hearings. That's why we're having these. Um, if everybody has an idea of what they should do, we should do, what building we should do first, how we should proceed, then we should have a discussion on that so people can hear what we're thinking. But to, to my point, though, don't you think we had that discussion after we discussed the other three buildings in this report? Well, we can, but I'm, I'm getting back to Guilford's point is, is this is a public hearing to educate people right. on the information that we've had individually for a while now. Right. 
Okay, we, now this, this feasibility study is fairly new, but we've had all the studies that have led up to this. We've had that information. Um, and like I said, we were, when I was chairman last year, or two years ago, was it? Last year. Last time I was chairman, I was, I was pushing the board to make a decision on how to proceed with this. And there were certain members that couldn't. Um, some of us had ideas on how we wanted to proceed, but everybody wanted to wait until we had public hearings so that we could get the information out to people. And that's what we're doing now. What I'm saying is, is if we all have a clear idea of what we want to do and how we want to proceed, then we don't need a building committee. Question comes. Uh, how could you possibly... Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not... Knowing how to proceed on the buildings is one thing. Knowing yeah. how to proceed now is another thing. I've always felt we should have a building committee. Yes. One, we're going to be required to have some type of committee to oversee right. it because of the power value. Yeah. We're going to have to have a, well, instead of a clerk of the works, we could have a clerk in the works. We're also going to have to have an owner's representative. It's part by law now. And then we're going to have to have some committee or some group to work with that person. So we're pretty much going to be required to have a committee. Right. And the question was, when do you have the committee? Right. Um, I've always been okay with with bringing a committee in now and moving forward. Um, so it's, you know how you want to do the buildings. I know how I want to do the process. I don't think I really want to know how I want to do the buildings. Okay. Right. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else in the board have I have Jim had a Jim. I was going to say that from what you just said, that no matter whether you have a building committee to decide your next step or you have or you're going to have a decision of what your vision is, you need a building committee to implement that because certainly nobody in sitting at that table who has the time nor the qualifications to go forward with something of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had some not so good results when we take on too much with what we have without having a proper committee behind it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. It's the same process as we did when we did the elementary school. Yes, Mr. Well, well, something wrong. Whatever I'm just saying, you need a building committee of some sort to implement your vision or to go with your next step, whatever that might be. That's all. All right, thank you. Mr. Muskevitz? Yeah, and I just want to uh, just say to Brian, um, we would, if if there was a committee, the committee would love to hear your ideas. Right. Yeah. And I would expect that every member of the board would participate as well and take that into consideration. So it's not like you don't have a voice in all of this. Right. But I think you need the committee also to sell it to the town because ultimately they're going to have to vote on it. So. I think it's the same thing as appointing a building committee by the Board of Selectmen, giving them their vision, and having them do the work and bringing it back to the Board of Selectmen for approval. For final, and, right. you know, for the final consensus of what they feel that the town would approve of um, to go forward with these buildings. Do you feel that these meetings are productive? I like it. Actually, yes, yeah. this is I great. Like hearing so I, I, I wanna, that, that was the step that I wanted to finish was the public meetings. and then But I still have my own ideas. Of so. course. Of we course. all we all shocked. <laughs> 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 this is the place to bring them out, Joyce. I, I mean, I, 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 I voice my opinion. Everybody else here voice their opinion. I have voiced my opinion. <laughs> don't, you, don't hold that. But hearing, <laughs> but hearing what people are saying now, yeah. I, I'm okay if we can go ahead and put out, if we decide at our next meeting tomorrow night, which is on the agenda tomorrow night, yeah, I guess so. if we decide tomorrow night, yes, we're going to have a committee and invite people to submit applications for the committee, I'm okay with if we're going to still have meetings, also advertising for applications and bring people in. And, and have them going concurrently right now. Yeah, um, exactly. To, to keep it moving. But we could also make a motion tomorrow night to do something too. We could. We could. And and appoint a building, you know, a, a building a, committee. A um, but there may be another resolution also. So stay tuned for tomorrow night. Okay. Tomorrow night to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Seven o'clock tomorrow night. We get an answer. Well, we have some other. Sense. We have. Did well, you put it on the front of the meeting or the back of the meeting? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> it's, it's a very. Thin we have budgets budget. first that are. Oh, that we have to go through. We have uh, two budgets. Three. Three. Three budgets first, and then so the. Yeah, budgets are part of town business, and they're very important.
Um, and that's also part of the town business, so you get to know where your money's going. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, can you talk briefly about the written comments people can uh, submit if they're watching at home? And I thought we had a date. I thought we established a date, and it's, I'm glad you brought it up, that uh, we have a deadline of January 21st for the meetings that we've had discussed now. But uh, we, at our meeting tomorrow, we'll also address the other three buildings and what kind of agenda we'll have for those. Will they be available to the public? Can we come and look at people's comments? So, so just to just to amplify a little bit, there is an open comment, written comment period after these two public hearings for anybody who wants to expand on their ideas or formalize their ideas, or if somebody in the viewing audience um, wants to submit their ideas, get them. To to the select board office, uh, they are public documents, and so they can be viewed, yes. Well, one other quick comment about the, uh, the building committee. Um, it's going to be tough to get a two-thirds vote to sell these historic town buildings. And I think the more people are involved in the discussion and the decision, the easier it's going to be to get the votes you want to sell the buildings you just have to want to sell. It's an open... And I, I, would, I would be reluctant to vote yes if it, on a plan to sell buildings if there wasn't a building committee um, looking at all sides of it. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got a say in it. You go to town meeting, put up their arm like that, everybody's equal. Uh, anything else? To adjourn. It's a public hearing. Yeah, All right. Any, any other comments? Set the tables down. Everybody even. Thank you.